Hey everybody, it's Joel Howe and this is part two of my introduction to polygon modeling tutorial and what we're gonna do is model actually one of these plates from my dish and dish rack assembly here. So following up on the previous video uh, that covered kind of the introduction to polygon modeling I'm gonna hide everything but this one oops I'm gonna select one of these and hide unselected and uh, so we've got a plate here and I'm gonna turn off the realistic shading so we can just kinda see it's um, it's basically a uh, uh, a plate and uh, the way I've got it set up is as an editable polygon uh, with a turbo smooth modifier and so I'm gonna take the next uh, 10 minutes or so and just create this from a cylinder and show you some of the tools and techniques for polygon modeling so let's get started uh, I, I can hide this and we'll start from scratch and uh, I'll hit G to bring my grid up here and uh, we'll start with a kind of a clean slate here so I'll start by um, the plate we'll start with a primitive object that's as close to the plate as possible and I would argue that that's the cylinder so if I draw a cylinder out we've got uh, we've got a basic cylinder here I'm gonna turn on oops I'm going to turn on edge faces. Toggle for that is F4, so you can toggle that on and off. And uh, I'm going to set my height segments to just one. Uh, height segments, if I right click on the down arrow here, it automatically sets that to the minimum value. And I'm going to set my cap segments there. Actually, I'm going to have to go to modify here and uh, do that because I started to draw a little cylinder there before. So I'm going to right click on the down arrow here. That's going to bring my height segments down to just one. And cap segments will add some detail in here. And so we've got our cylinder. Uh, and you know we can adjust the parameters here. But we, I'm going to keep the number of sides the same. And uh, let's start to look at um, maybe the height and maybe make it a little bit bigger. But in general, uh, the overall form here looks pretty good. So I'm going to kind of basically cut myself off from these parameters and we're going to convert this to an editable poly. And when we do that, the interface changes. We go from that very simple interface where we had uh, just the radius and the height and now we've got these complex buttons that show all the sub objects and uh, uh, we've got a lot of that content duplicated up here as well. Um, and you'll see this is the graphite modeling tool section. This is relatively new in 3ds Max. And you'll find that, uh, that it's a lot more context sensitive. And uh, so I'm going to be kind of bouncing between the two um, just because I've used this for many, many years. And uh, I use the graph. It, I'm forcing myself to use some of the graphite modeling tools. Uh, here. So first thing I'll do is name this. This will be called the plate. And um, I'm going to add a turbo smooth modifier right from the start just so you can see what happens when we apply a turbo smooth. Uh, mesh smooth also works. Turbo smooth is a little more efficient from a memory standpoint. But you can see that if I, for every iteration I click, basically these faces get broken into smaller faces and things become rounder and rounder. So the higher the uh, number of iterations, the more faces, and uh, the smoother the overall surface. Four seems like a lot. We don't need to have that many. I'll leave it at two for right now because this is a very simple model. But the nice thing about this is I can work at the editable poly level because if I go and uh, turn on the end result toggle here, we'll actually see that end result and if I go into any sub object, I'll expand out my list of sub objects here, and we can click here or here, and um, you can see the actual uh, orange cage, the low polygon mesh, and then the high poly, uh, the high poly subdivided surface from the Turbo Smooth. Now, um, how this works is that uh, <coughs> we've got. I'm going to actually just leave, turn that off for right now and just stick with this uh, low polygon mesh because I want to I want you to look at that topology. Now plates are usually going to have um, 
basically the, the center section dips down and in. So what I'll do is if I want to select some faces here is I can ch choose individual faces and I can hold control and click all the way around. Uh, but one of the tricks in 3ds Max, one of the things I like to do is if I, especially for the center point, I can click the vertex at the very center and uh, then I'm going to control click which converts my vertex selection to whatever I control click and I'll control click the polygon section and it basically by that control click I've I've converted that vertex selection to a polygon selection and uh, and uh, so let me do that one more time I'll grab the bottom vertex and the top vertex so now I've got two vertices selected and I'll control click and we've got both of those there. Now the interesting thing is I can use select and move and rotate so I can start to scale these up or down and uh, they're gonna I can scale them in one plane if I want to or not uh, but in this case I can scale them and we've got that. So at this point I've got both of those selected and I can use the move tool and I'll just move on the vertical axis and I'll move this down so now I've got a very basic uh, kind of divot for the dish and uh, if we go back and we look at this with the turbo smooth selected you know you can already see if I go to a front view I'll hit the uh, F key you can already start to see the um, the overall shape there so it's a very basic edit and obviously this is a very simple polygon model but it's enough to to get us started now when we when we have when we're subdividing the surface on top we have some really really smooth uh, transitions there and so what we'll do is I'm going to use the the uh, I've got to have that selected and uh, I'm going to use some add some additional edge loops to this object and that will give us some some tighter curvature in when we subdivide and so I'll show you uh, let me show you that let me go to my uh, edge sub object and I'll try to use some of the tools in the graphite modeling section I'll select one edge and if I select loop that's gonna loop all the way around on that edge and um, I can uh, do that for other edges but let me just show this uh, I'm gonna chamfer an edge and I'm gonna pull this down and choose chamfer settings and so we can kind of customize this and so automatically you've got this kind of pop-up here and it's automatically turned it from one to two uh, so we've there used to be one edge there and uh, so if I get rid of that there's our original edge and if I go to chamfer I can shift click that as well and you can see it turned it to two edges it broke that one edge into two and if I add more we can have even more refinement there and so um, I'll keep the amount the same because that's fine and if you take a look at what happens oops let me go back to my edge loop and make sure I hit the OK so that that actually is remembered and uh, if I store that now take a look at the because we added that loop and because there's more subdivision uh, we've got a much sharper edge there and if I go to the front view and I'll go to wireframe you probably you can kinda see that sharp edge there and um, so I'll go back and shade that. So I'm going to repeat that process for the other edges here. And uh, so I'll go to Edge. I'm going to hit F4 so I got my, and I'll choose these other edges. Maybe this edge down here. And I'll loop that. And I'll hit Shift uh, Chamfer again. All the settings are basically remembered from the last time. I'll hit OK. And uh, that gets us a much sharper edge I can hide that and we're looking pretty good so let me do a few more things here back to our edge sub object and uh, in this case I'm gonna choose I'm gonna add a little more of a bump out on the outside here so I'm gonna choose this vertical edge and instead of loop I'm gonna choose ring and that's gonna follow around uh, basically perpendicular to a loop and um, instead of uh, chamfer I'm going to choose connect and I'll, sh I'll hold shift and choose connect and what you'll see is it basically drew an edge
between all those other edges that I had selected which is great I'll keep that as it is we could add more if we wanted to but I don't really want to I just want to have one edge there and what I can do now is just use my scale tool select the scale and I can push that out and what I'll do is turn on show end result and see if we can't uh, get this on the screen and you can kind of see the topology here as I scale that out so we can control the curvature uh, we can actually double back in on itself if we want to but I just want to have a little bit of a little bit con extra con uh, the mouse is kind of sliding on me there and uh, so we'll get a, a, a little bit more of a rounder edge there um, and that covers that so now we've got this we've got this edge on the outside and if I go back to that sub object Max is Max uh, actually remem remembers what was selected so I can I can work within that sub object uh, let's see so now let's add a little rim at the bottom um, so I've got my uh, kind of the, the the ridge that we'd set the plate on uh, so I'll choose the bottom vertice and I'll click on convert to polygon it's control click and that selects all those polygons and um, there's a nice little tool in here called inset which you can see down here in the command panel but um, it's also up here in the polygon section I will hold shift and click and you can see inset has just kind of made a copy and I can bring that in or out and I'll bring that in just a little bit actually the default of one was fine and I'll hit OK or I can choose apply and stay in the inset and maybe I'll do that and I'll bring this inset even more a little bit there and we'll say OK because now what I have is I want this range of polygons because we'll extrude those down to create a little lip on the plate um, easiest way to select that might be to choose that one edge and then choose ring and that went all the way around you can kind of see they're all highlighted yellow and now again I can control click polygon and I've got all those faces and so now I'll just extrude that down this is the interactive mode so let me just show that because I've been holding I've been doing the shift click to bring up this uh, I think they call it the caddy uh, but uh, um, you can also kind of go interactive if I just plain click it then I've got a, a custom cursor here and I can just pull that out so it's more interactive that way and um, now those faces are out I want this to be really kind of a low profile lip so it's not going to be that much but it's going to it's going to be enough to kind of define that lip and uh, so we'll get out of that sub object mode and go back to tur turn our turbo smooth on and uh, we've got our plate there's a little rim on the bottom if we wanted to have a really sharp edge on there if I go back to my polygon you can kind of see that uh, the rim is there I'll just turn the turbo smooth off so you can see it I'll do another extrude but I'll go just a tiny tiny bit and so there's a very narrow narrow edge there and that edge is going to help when we turbo smooth it's going to give that much more more pronounced edge so you can see the curvature overall and uh, so that should cover it we've got our <coughs> we've got our plate modeled and we're ready to um, we we've, we've taken a cylinder and uh, added a lot of new new shapes and forms and uh, and we've got this uh, basically ready for um, to be uh, included in our dish rack assembly. Thanks for watching.